Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Generation 2 Combat Hero Megatron and I love this toy. Originally released in 1994, he retailed for approximately $20 and we see that here Megatron is a tank again. So, you know, we recently looked at the first Generation 2 Megatron, the one that was a big green tank. And then we looked at the uh, more recent Transformers Collectors Club. Uh, Pretender Megatron, which also transformed into a tank. So I figured, what the heck, let's continue on with the trend and uh, finish off the trilogy, if you will. So, here in tank mode, Megatron is, Megatron is approximately five and a half inches long, seven if you want to go to the end of the barrel here, two and a half inches tall. And as you can see, a purple truck, uh, or sorry, tank this time around. Um, it's, it's a very, very similar version of that original G2 Megatron just downscaled a little bit and uh, with some more features added on. Uh, I really like the colors on this. Now this is sort of a ridiculous color for a tank, just a big purple tank with uh, black camel markings. But for some reason, uh, and you got the teal highlights there on the tracks and on the cannon with the orange bezel. But uh, for some reason, I really like this color. Um, this just really works for me uh, and for a Decepticon. It just, it just really, really seems to work. Now, I since found out, uh, since making the video of the Pretender one, that there was, I talked about in that video how I would have liked to seen the uh, the little Megatron that was inside of the shell done in either green and with, with the purple camo like the G2 Megatron was, or in a purple like this guy was. I recently found out that there was an unreleased repaint of this guy that was gray or silver, with the purple, with the green silverish um, uh, camel tiger stripes on it, uh, that looks very much like that small pretender Megatron that we looked at recently. So that's what this, that's what that guy was uh, homaging was the repaint of this guy that was never released. So I, I learned that after I made the video. So I, I would have loved to have known that before making that video. But what are you gonna do? Can't go back in time. Uh, got a little bit of wheels here on the bottom, so Megatron can roll. Not great, but he can roll. And uh, just real quick for comparison, here he is next to his nemesis, Combat Hero, Optimus Prime. So you can see what these guys look like side by side. Now, Megatron does come with some weapons. He came with this um, cannon, laser rifle, uh, 50 cal, <laughs> whatever you want to call this. There you go. And there is a port right here on the top where you can plug this gun in, which uh, usually I don't like uh, weapons on vehicles, but on a tank it works. Especially considering that this is a very M1 Abram-ish looking tank. And uh, there was always 50 cows mounted on the top of those. So that works for me. And then you've got these um, these two, um, what are you going to call these? It's the rubber tipped missiles. And uh, they're hollow on the inside. And they use the bezels to uh, launch these out. Very much like the Combat Hero Prime that we looked at a while back. So the, the tank has on each side these little panels that fold out just like that and then you can store your missiles one on each side just like that and then just carry those around until you're ready to use them just like that which is really really cool and then when you are ready to use them you're going to take one of these and if you look inside um uh, hopefully that'll come off well on camera it's kind of hard to look inside of a dark tube there there is one side that has a flat edge so when you mount these on the cannon the bottom of the cannon has a flat edge. So that's the side you're going to want to mount that on. Just like that. And then remove the bezel. It ju it's just tabbed in right there on the back. Put this down. And then you're going to uh, punch this. And as you saw, the, uh, the missile just kind of shot out on me just a little bit. Now, once you remove the bezel, this is on a hinge. So you can move this up and down. So you can aim that. So I'm just going to bring that back here. And actually, let's see, I really want to do this in a way where you guys are going to be able to see what it does. And uh, now I'm going to hit this down so there's a possibility I can knock the camera over. So let's let's just hope that doesn't happen. But there you go. And it actually fires really, really well. Let's try this on this side so you can see it shooting a little further. There you go. And uh, that actually <laughs> shot out past my table. I don't know where that went. Transforming this guy is relatively simple and very similar to what we saw earlier with the previous version of Megatron. So we're just going to remove the rest of the weapons. 
close these up. You can leave, you can leave the bezel in. Uh, you can leave it out. It's it's really up to you. It doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm gonna start right here on the front and move these panels down just like so to uh, form the arms. Rotate these down and then rotate them around to reveal the fists. There you go. Then on the back here, the whole back half of the tank is gonna split back and rotate. No uh, panels to open and close this time. Let's bring that all the way around. And there's also no little feet to pop out. Those are already kind of molded there. Uh, you're gonna take the entire front of the tank and rotate this down. Now, it feels like this should snap into place. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to or not. Mine doesn't. You can see mine kind of stays kind of uh, loose. But you can see there's a wedge right there in the plastic. So it feels like, I think it feels like it should snap into place. It just it just doesn't on mine. We'll move the camera up just a little bit. You can see the rest of the figure. Although, that's pretty cool right there. <laughs> it's kind of like a tank face. This is the new Decepticon tank face. And uh, maybe too tall. We'll bring it down a little bit. Uh, finally, we're going to take the, um, the cannon here. And we're going to slide this over to the side. This time, the head is not spring-loaded. So you have to reach in here and pull this out. Pop that into place. And then we are going to... Snap the bezel back in place. And what I like about this is that it's got the holes in it, and it's also got this groove on the bottom that's going to uh, accommodate this hose right here. So what I do is I um, just kind of wind it up like you just saw me do, and then plug it in just like that. And that works really well. And uh, there is Megatron in robot mode. Here in robot mode, Megatron is approximately six inches tall at the top of the head, six and a half if you want to go to the top of the uh, cannon there. Uh, it's articulation wise, he's got the head that can rotate. Uh, the arms can go in and out, forwards and backwards. You have a rotation at the elbow as well as a bend. You've got a universal joint at the hip so you can go forward and backwards in and out and then you had the bend at the knee not bad articulated and this guy stands a lot easier than uh the optimus prime version did uh, i always have trouble standing optimus prime up the only ha a trouble that i really have with this guy is getting him to stop doing that while i'm messing around with it you know uh now uh, i love the deco on this guy just again the purple really works for me i never thought i'd like a purple megatron but this guy really really works for me and i love the silver head with the uh kind of lavenderish face it just it just works for me for a megatron figure this really works and i love again um it's generation two it was the 90s it was it was in your face so right there big uh, <laughs> sticker on his chest that says megatron rules with some tick marks possibly of how many autobots uh he's defeated in battle uh, very possibly. I don't know. It was crazy. Again, the 90s were crazy. They were loud. They were bright and they were in your face and they were very extreme. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, now, the bezel does kind of hinder your articulation a little bit. You can probably see that I'm I'm struggling some trying to get this arm to pose and, you know, that's going to happen. So do, do, do be aware of that. Uh, I do kind of wish they would have had something on his back to put his bezel like they did with Optimus. That would have been really, really nice. But oh, well. Now, let's, uh, let's go back and look at the weapons one more time, if I can ever get that thing put back in place. Uh, so, he's got his gun, and you can just give him that, put that in his hand. There you go. Uh, and that's it. That's a Megatron with his gun. Uh, now, the missiles, very cool. You can either load one up and have it loaded like that, which is very menacing. Uh, but it's also very ridiculous and very difficult uh, when you're trying to... Uh, set up a display on your shelf <laughs> but you can do that if you want and of course you can always uh, press the bezel and shoot those off so that works really good and then of course you can also uh, pop open the uh, pieces on his arms and you can pop the uh, missiles right in there and you can store them that way too which and you can go either way you can go forwards like that or you can go backwards like i did just now and i like to do them backwards because it kind of reminds me uh, call me sentimental, but it does remind me of the G1 Megatron's Megatron arm cannon. So, call me sentimental, but I like to do it that way. <laughs> uh, this one's getting a little loose. I may have to tighten this one up, the uh, the hinge for that uh, 
panel right there. This figure has such a crazy story. I was at a flea market with a friend of mine, and uh, some guy just had like a bin tote uh, of, of crap, and, and and he had laid everything out, uh, out on a on a blanket on the floor. And it just it just looked like some guy who cleaned out a house or something, and it was just just throwing things out or trying to get rid of them. So as we're walking by, I saw this guy, and he also had a tarantulas, uh, the um, the transmetal tarantula. So I picked him up. Uh, of course, no weapons, uh, no no missiles, and no gun. Just a figure by itself. Uh, tarantulas also missing the gun in the front wheel, but I grabbed them anyway. I asked him how much for both figures. He they made an offer. And I hate it when people say make an offer because I never really know what to say, but I figured what the heck, I'll see what I can do. I asked $5 for both figures. He said yes. I almost threw the $5 at him as I was running away before he realized what, what, what mistake he'd done. <laughs> so basically, I picked up this figure for $2.50, which is ridiculous. Uh, then I paid $20 for the gun and another $20 for the missile, so... Uh, who's laughing now, right? But anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, history on this guy. Kind of funny. All right, and uh, real quick for comparison, here he is one more time with his nemesis, if he will stand for us, Optimus Prime. And uh, there you go. There you can see what these guys look like together. Uh, so very cool. I really love having both of these in my collection now. Very, very cool. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that about covers. <laughs> this guy is very, very fun figure and uh, with a very cool and funny story, uh, at least for me. So I think that about covers Transformers Generation 2 Combat Hero Megatron. What did you think of this figure and what would you like to see me review next? Let me know by leaving me a comment, give me some thumbs up, subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see and I'll talk to you next time.